Okay, so do we have an answer for part C? Yes. What would that answer be? Uh, 1,100 newtons. 1,100 newtons. Good, so we got that the tension force from the bicep is going to be 1,100 newtons. All right, so this was a very important problem solving technique. Um, if you get stuck using Newton's second law, try another version of Newton's second law. We've got three of them overall, net force x, net force y, and net torque. Well, net force y didn't get us very far, so then we just tried a different version. Notice that so far we didn't even need net force y. We would have been able to solve the whole thing here using net force torque. How could you have seen that ahead of time? Well, we should expect the torque to be easier because we've chosen the pivot to cancel out the hinge force. So oftentimes torque will be easier because you're going to choose a pivot that makes the, that cancels out, that shows that there's no torque for one of the forces. Okay, we're ready for part D then. Was our answer for part D? Uh, Good. And what does the negative sign tell us? That it's coming in the downward direction. Because we chose, I should have written those down, we chose up and to the right as our positive directions. So like I said, my first instinct here turned out to be incorrect, but that's okay. I didn't build it into the equation. So again, I did not put a dot on top of this variable to keep in mind that the variable itself was going to tell me the sign. So the variable came out negative. That doesn't mean we made a mistake. We expected it to come out either positive or negative. So I could have gone through this whole problem not knowing whether there was a hinge force, and maybe there wouldn't have been. And when I get to this point, I would have gotten the F of H is equal to zero, right? Is that if there was no hinge force. That's right. So if for some reason the hinge force, so notice why was there a hinge force here? Because it was required to balance out the other vertical forces. Um, well, if it had turned out that the other vertical forces were canceling each other out already, then, um, then this would just come out to be a zero. Okay. That's right. So um, you, you might as well just assume there's one and then work out the math to see how that yeah. is um, going to work. Now, in this case, we could have figured out what was going to happen here already. Um, we know these two forces are going to be more effective at providing torques than this force because it's closer. Therefore, we know that the biceps has to have a bigger upward force than these two downward forces. Otherwise, the net torque can't be zero. Remember, the hinge is not providing any torques. So to prevent rotation, this has to be a very, very big force because it has such a small r. So this force is bigger than these two combined. Um, therefore, without the hinge, the arm would tend to move up. There would tend to be a, a net upward force that's not counterbalanced by these. That's how, at the very start, I saw that my first guess was wrong and this was going to be downwards. But that, that's a pretty subtle and difficult chain in logic. You don't have to be able to do that to get the problem right. All you have to do is wait until the math tells you whether it's going to be up or down. But we, we should have gotten that here. Notice again that what were our weights? Our weights were things like, uh, well, our weights were pretty small, but the tension in the bicep was 1,100. There was a huge tension in the bicep because it's so close to the hinge. 
By the way, this is an interesting fact in anatomy. Your muscles have to be able, um, this muscle has to be able to exert much more force than the weight it's pulling up because it's attached pretty close to the hinge. All right, but the most important part um, is you can just put a term in for the force from the hinge and then wait to see whether it comes out to be zero or not. And here it certainly didn't come out that way. It came out negative. Well, one more thing we could have seen. Suppose that you um, thought that there was an x force from the hinge. Well, then you would do this. You would write net force x equals max. And then you would write an x force from the hinge. And there are no other x forces. So you wouldn't put anything else on the left-hand side. And you would know the right-hand side is 0, because you know that we're not moving horizontally. And now the math has proven to you that there's no x force from the hinge. That should be obvious from common sense. But if you really like to work it out with, with math, we could even have figured out mathematically that the x force from the hinge was 0. So we're on part D. You're correct. I probably shouldn't have used T for the bicep force because I'm confusing that with tau. I should have said force for the bicep. 